Are international powers able to use agents to undermine socio-political consensus and cohesion? Subversion, a new book by Dr Andreas Krieg, explores how information, so-called weaponized narratives, are being released by Russia, China and the United Arab Emirates to bring down their opponents. I'm delighted now to be joined by Dr Krieg. Um, what are weaponized narratives? Right. I mean, most of the debate usually revolves around disinformation or misinformation, which is a kind of a niche of that, of that whole chunk of weaponized narratives. Narratives are kind of the storylines that we tell each other, um, how we you know, make sense of the world, and they can be factual or non-factual. And I think that's very important to kind of broaden it out to actually talk about weaponized narratives, which are storylines about a particular issue that we might know about something about or not. If we don't, and we're being exposed to a weaponized storyline, it's something that we absorb quite easily, that we transport as well, and it shapes how we think about particular problems, particularly problems in the political domain that might be fairly complex. Who has weaponized it? Well, we all, everyone is weaponizing it, but I think what this book is all about is about state agents in particular, but also some non-state actors who are malign external powers that are trying to really penetrate our information environments uh, in particular liberal societies um, to change the way we think about certain issues and more importantly to mobilize us to take action, sometimes becoming, you know, taking violent action, changing policy making uh, and uh, at, in some instances also, you know, obviously change discourse more widely across the media domain, and most of them are actually authoritarians. Uh, let's start with an example which might be quite easy to understand and then sort of move on from there. Um, before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, there were lots of people, you point this out in your mm. book, on the right and the left saying, oh no, the Russians aren't going to mm. invade Ukraine. Why might they have been saying that? What kind of influences might they have picked up? Now, what's quite interesting is how these information warriors work. They work through networks of a range of different actors, state actors, non-state actors, but mostly private individuals, corporations, uh, funded MPs, academics, journalists. And these networks all kind of work seemingly organically. And what Russia has done, and they've done it, you know, for the last hundred years, the KGB has been very good at it, the Soviets were very good at it, but now they're operating in this hyper-connected information environment where they basically just subvert, hence subversion, uh, active organic movements. The peace movement is, is a currently a, a very good case study, actually, particularly on the continent, where we see the Russians really infiltrating their thinking and using their, their anti-war movement to basically plug certain narratives about who's right and who's wrong. Obviously, in their point of view, it's Russia's right, Ukraine's wrong, it's all the, about the West being evil, America's evil, Britain is evil. Um, and it's a great example of the, the far left in particular, but also some far right groups who've really bought into the Russian narrative. These are disenfranchised individuals or communities who suddenly feel empowered by storylines about you know, very simple black and white, the good guys, the Russians, the bad guys are the Americans, the Brits, the West, NATO. Um, and so since 2014 and even before that, we've seen the Russians really penetrating these or targeting these communities in Western, uh, in, in Western societies and mobilizing them. And take me a stage further. How can they actually demolish our social cohesion? How can they take the glue away from our societies? What kind of strategies are involved there? I mean, the, the problem generally with our information environment in this hyper-connected world where, you know, we're fed by social media, we're guided by social media, we live in these kind of echo chambers. Um, the problem with that is obviously you know, we're already polarizing anyway into different directions, right? Our discourse is very polarized these days. Um, there is a mainstream and then outside of that mainstream, there's quite a lot of polarization going on. So what these disinformation or these information warriors are doing, the Russians are very good at it, the Emiratis have been extremely good at it in the West, but also in the Arab world, is they're targeting these alienated communities, providing them with, uh, you know, very, very simple uh, uh, sort of narratives to understand the world and, you know, feeding these kind of uh, grievances that people have. People have grievances, whether they're socioeconomic in nature. And I think that's what Russia is trying to do right now. They're trying to target those people who are now saying, oh, we're, we're hit by inflation. We're hit by all these, uh, you know, all these ramifications of the Ukraine war. Do you actually want this? You know whose fault it is? It's actually the West. That's kind of the narrative that Russia is trying to implant here. Yeah. I think you're describing a process here which has gone on since time immemorial. Undermining yes. the other side, subversion is obviously yes. an old craft. But we lay ourselves open to it in the digital world, is that right? The, the way we communicate with each, other, with each other now opens up a new vulnerability, I think. And could you also say, because we're just beginning to run out of time, are we any good at this? Is the United States, is Britain any good at this stuff? 
We used to be very good at this. I think the United Kingdom has actually, Britain throughout the Cold War, had quite a good capability in this. But we lost that capability. We in the West, we thought we won the Cold War. We won that war of narratives, which was the Cold War, right, between liberalism and authoritarianism. We're entering a new Cold War, a new, very, you know, a competition, a great power competition, which is over narratives, essentially. We need to redevelop these kind of networks. And we need to develop information networks, not just at home, to defend ourselves against these uh, militias, uh, external warriors but also develop these networks overseas to kind of promote, you know, what Britain stands for and promote our values in the world and doing it not necessarily in an antagonistic way, but building consensus. So why I think Russia, the UAE and China, they do it in an almost coercive way, uh, in transactional way, paying people to say what they want to say. We need to go out and build consensus around what our values are, you know, liberal, liberal values. And I think liberal values is kind of still, there's still a quite a big audience out there in the world, but we're not doing anything to promote it. We're always on the defensive. And I think we, this Ukraine war has shown us that we need to build our narratives and transport it to audiences across the world uh, in, a, in a consensual manner rather than in a top-down manner. Yes. Um, it, it, yeah. I, I, um, I, I got the impression that... Um, uh, that uh, oh, completely lost the thread of my thought there. Um, how worried are you about all this stuff? I'm, I'm, I'm very worried about it. I think we're in the midst of a, of a war... In a, in a, we talk about global competition. That global competition, as I said, is about narratives. We're in the midst of that war. I know what I was going to say. That the Russians now put this at, almost at the top of their priorities. If, Absolutely. If, if you think about their military, this is kind of yeah. as important, more important than missiles. They don't have any tanks anymore. They don't have any missiles anymore. They don't have any troops anymore. But they still have these information and these narratives that they put out there. We need to invest in that as well. Your book is called Subversion, and the long title is The Strategic Weaponization of Narratives, and it is out now. Uh, thank you to Dr. Andreas King.